Okay, I invited you. <clears throat> Do you see it? Yeah. Okay. Hi. No, that, that was me saying it earlier. Turn your, turn your volume down. <clears throat> Are you in the furthest corner of the house? Okay, I'll see if they're still getting feedback or anything like that. Hi friends, uh, if anybody's in here and you wanna help us with some IT troubleshooting, uh, are you getting feedback? Do my lips match what I'm saying? This is my question for you. Look at, the hair is beautiful today. Are we excited? I'm excited. Uh, okay, now we've got 10 people. Anybody wanna help me with IT? So I'm just wondering if you guys are getting feedback on the audio and or if there's like a major delay in the voice. I'm not sure there's anything I'm gonna be able to do to fix it, but just no feedback, lips match. Woo! Yes! Woo! We are figuring it out. Pretty savvy. Okay, uh, what I'm thinking we can do is straight up bring my phone with me when we do the shampoo. Mm -hmm. And just, if we can set it up, it might disconnect, and then it'll be better when we come back up here. Yep. Okay, you ready? Mm-hmm. Have a seat. Oh, thanks, Kristen and Red Copper Lady. Hello, everyone. Hello, beautiful people. Okay, so if you're new to my page, my name is Gal, and I help folks have a beautiful, healthy, wavy, and curly hair. This is Mallory. I am from Mallory Does Your Hair. I'm a professional hairstylist. I like to cut hair. I like to dye hair. I like to teach you how to do both of those things and uh, try out new product and stuff. And I also happen to be Gal's hairstylist for like... <laughs> A decade? More. A decade. Yeah, we've known each other for much longer than that because we went to school together. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I've been cutting her hair for a really long time around the same time that she started her curly hair journey. Probably before that, eh? Yeah. Before she started her, her wavy hair journey. and Which um, is when I was 28, so that was only three years ago. What? I know, I know. You were a huge motivator in why I did that, though, because every time you played with my hair, you're like... You know you have with your like like can I, yeah. can I please try to play with it? Yes, I remember being yeah. like, let's defuse it, let's do something like a little different, let's try and work with your natural weight pattern and texture. And um and then you did. And then you like <laughs> and then I was like, whoa, girl, your hair is like a different breed than the last time I saw you. It got like exponentially better and you like to play with your hair a lot. So you yeah. like really learned really quickly how to deal with it. And then I'm pretty sure I was the one who was like you gotta make yourself a TikTok. People know. <laughs> you People are... already know your secrets. No more gatekeeping. And because I was like, I was like, gal, what are you using? How are you doing? How are you styling this? Like, this is incredible. Your hair is like so much weavier than I thought it was. You're so sweet. So it was definitely you and Candace, who you know. Yes. Uh, between the two of you, but you were the first person to say you should start a wavy hair TikTok. Um, and then a few months after you said that, and I had been marinating about it, Candace called me and said, we're starting TikToks. What is yours about? <laughs> and, and I said, wavy hair. Yeah. <laughs> because you had primed me. So between the two of you. Okay, amazing. Hammond, amazing. Okay, cool. So we're giving you a haircut today. Let's yeah. do a consultation. Um, this, for those of you who don't know, I start off every single appointment with a consultation. The consultation has to be super thorough. And... The person sitting in your chair has to be like, yes, confident that the stylist understands and knows what we're talking about. And the stylist obviously has to be confident too. So if I'm drilling her questions and I'm still like, mm, it is unclear to me what it is that you want. I will say those words out loud. It is unclear to me what you want. And they'll be like, okay. And then we'll look at more pictures. And then by the end of the consultation, it should be like, oh yeah, I got this. And, and they should be like, feel really confident about it too. So if you're ever having a consultation and you're like starting to sweat cause you're like, oh fuck, I just like don't know what this person wants. Feel free to say that out loud. It actually makes the person sitting in your chair feel like, oh, okay. Like it makes them feel more confident that once you do finally get to the resolve, 
everybody's on the same page. Don't be afraid. They're not going to think that you don't know what you're doing. They're going to be like, oh, okay, like we need to talk about this more. You know? They really, see, you're seeking to understand. Yeah, exactly. That's all that they feel. They're like, okay. Um, and don't be afraid to go get another stylist and get a second opinion as well. I do that a lot. We always in my salon put our heads together to, to come up with a game plan. Okay, so for gals here, what what are you vibing? What are you thinking? So I'm growing out this wolf cut um, that someone's saying cape me up. <laughs> we will. We're just doing a consult. Or I don't know if we will, but we're just doing a consult. Um, the... Uh, so I'm growing out a curly wolf cut. So the, I had curly bangs, which you gave me and I loved them, but I, you know, new, new year, new me. Yeah. Like I think, but I just, I still want to be able to like keep sections out of a ponytail. Like right now when I pull my hair up in a ponytail, um, I don't mind if they like are, it's possible to keep them back, like to use your discretion on that. But it just right now when I pull them up, I, it's long blunt bangs yeah. like I want something more graduated yeah and then the other thing that I don't love is if I have all of my hair to one side it's just like feels like so gradual and like like casually like going away from my face but if I have the middle part which is what I normally have um it's like bangs long like right at the front and yeah. I just want something that like is more incorporated incorporated Fantastic. and but I want to keep the as much length as I can but like don't be shy if you think length needs to come off because of damage I want you to take the length off because yeah, yeah. I mean like as I pull your hair up hi Hillary sorry she's hi, another friends. creator she's awesome oh fun as I pull your hair up, I'm looking at your ends. I'm not seeing like any little white balls at the end of your hair. I'm not seeing the hair start to split. Like in some areas, um, I can see it just the beginning of the start to split, okay. which means that you're right on track for a haircut. Okay. If you want to keep majority of the length, I'd say we're like safe to do so. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. And then the other thing was like, if you look, usually in order to get root volume, these shortest layers... Like, look how friggin' long they are right now. What is happening? You, what, last time I got my hair cut, my short layers were, like, up here. So, I don't know how, well, I mean, curly. So, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. that, uh, so they've grown, like, several inches. And when I have those shorter layers, because the top layer of my hair is the least curly part of my head, it helps when they're quite a bit shorter, just so that they bounce up a little bit and I can get that root volume. But I just don't know how to incorporate that into a long hairstyle, but I still want that root volume. Yeah, no, for sure. We can definitely do that. We're going to, I mean, we're going to take the length. We're just going to trim the ends about an inch, maybe an inch and a half off of the bottom. That may sound a lot to some people, but to me and Gal, that's like pretty typical. My hair grows really fast. And we haven't cut it in a while. It's been a minute. Six months, I think, at least. Yeah, it's been a while. Probably because of your, your waiting list. <laughs> I know. I, know, I blame your waiting list. I've it's already booked for February. Oh, good for you. Hey, fabulous. <laughs> fabulous. Pretty <laughs> much your appointment. Yeah. Expect I, wait, I think I'm still booked for November. I have to cancel that one. Okay, I can go through. And um, I've actually closed my books for a little while. For, I've, I've closed my books uh, six months from now. So what is that? Like next evening? Well, at a certain point, it's like you can't plan that far in advance. Yeah, and like now the clients who are coming to see me for their colors and all that fun stuff, they're like, okay, I want to pre-book my next appointment for the next year, and and the receptionist like she's booked for the next year. It's like yeah. it's, it's kind of unreasonable. So. Yeah. Uh, someone says, are you getting your hair cut at home? This is Mallory's home, and just because it's easier for us to go live in her home, I often see her in the salon as well. Yes. Yeah. So typically, <laughs> Gal sees me in the salon. Um, you're a really good friend of mine. And I don't cut hair at home. <laughs> I do film TikToks at home, but I don't cut hair at home. Most of the TikToks that I do film are in salon, but this is like a separate business from my salon business. I'm just like an employee at Hair Republic. And so whenever I'm doing lives and stuff, it has to be for my house. Um, but I, I hate cutting hair at home. <laughs> Only for my besties. <laughs> I don't do that. Um, okay. Awesome. I think we, I think I have a really good idea of what we're going to do today. Okay. Some of the pieces through the front are obviously going to be shorter, but we're definitely going to create more graduation through your grown out bangs, which makes sense because they were cut above the eyebrow, which means that they were pretty blunt. So if you're feeling like you just have a big chunk of hair that hangs there and it doesn't really have any place to go, it's because it doesn't. That's right. Hillary, um, we're not bringing the bangs back. I had bangs for years though. 
yeah, I love the bangs on you and I still love curly bangs, but I think I'm just, I just like, I'm ready for like a slight change. Yeah, so man, we're just do... different. Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, it's going to be cool. It's going to be really fun. Also, you heard it first here. Side part's coming. I've been saying it's it. It's coming. Side part <laughs> is coming. Everyone's been like, oh, middle part, middle part. I'm telling you right now. I know. I've been saying this. Side part's coming. It's mm. coming. It's on the verge. Especially, mm. I think, in like the wavy and curly hair community because um, everybody's cutting these like really wispy, cutie little bangs right now. Mm -hmm. And I think like that will segue into a side part. I love it so much I as, I as so a millennial. Sure. So I feel like 2022 for wavy hair was very much like curly bangs, middle part, yeah. perfect diamond brush curls. And 2023 is giving side part, curtain bang, like wavy curtain bang, uh, like messy, tousled, frizzy almost. Like that's that's my prediction. Yeah. I think so too. <laughs> I've always liked rock star hair. I yeah. like every time I've always styled gal's hair. I feel, I feel like you've always been like, man, how do you make it look like put together, but so like rock tossled, yeah. yeah, tossled. I, I, you know, like obviously there's a time and place. I think the Denman is like a really cool skill to have under your tool belt, but it's not the way that I prefer to style and wear my, my wavy hair or style other people's wavy hair. It's just like mm -hmm. not my vibe. That being said, um, sometimes I get roasted on the internet for it. <laughs> so like, everybody's got their style. Everybody's got their style yeah. and you know, just because other people like it doesn't mean that you should like it. So mm -hmm. if you're a perfectly coiled kind of gal, you really, really like that high definition, rock it. Rock Absolutely. it, enjoy it. If you like something a little bit messier, a little bit more rock starry, a little bit more worn, some, some may even say frizzy, uh, rock it. Okay. Let's go wash your hair. Okay. You guys are coming, don't worry. But full disclosure, uh, we don't know how good the internet is downstairs. Okay, one second. I have to hide the basement. <laughs> you guys are gonna get a close up of my turtleneck. Yeah, it turns out I actually live here. It turns out this is a real home. Um, so uh, we are doing the wash down here. We do not know if uh, there's gonna be good internet, but don't worry, we are going back upstairs eventually. So. This is perfect. Can I do this? Yeah. Yes? Okay. <laughs> we making way. I should have bought this girl over here. It's okay. You've got a life. How dare you have a life outside of my little TikTok lives. Okay. Mine too. Here we yeah. are. Yeah. This is my... This is my home salon. My husband is a plumber. Um, and he's also like kind of a neat freak. So having hair all over the house was not an option for him. So as soon as we moved to this house, he like took this essentially like furnace room and built me a salon in the basement. And it's really nice. I love it. But now I only do um, my like besties and my family from home because okay. we're all too busy. Yeah. Sorry. Good? Yeah, we're good. We're doing this. Okay. Did you just get married recently? Yeah. <laughs> Centerpieces from her wedding are at my feet. Yeah, right now. literally at her feet. There's just like 500 <laughs> candles at her feet. I just got married. I just got married like three weeks ago. Um, for for those of you who haven't been married and you're like, oh, should I do it? Ten out of ten. Highly recommend. Like funniest <laughs> day ever. So fucking fun. I agree, friends. Yeah, weddings are the best, especially when it's your own wedding, because it's all the people you love. Yeah. And you, you just like hired all the people. Yeah, you know what's up. I have to admit, actually, I thought I was gonna enjoy my own wedding less because I thought there would be more stress. Yeah. And there was before the wedding, but not the day of. The I, day of was yeah. just like the best. I found once the act, like I was so, so stressed leading up to my wedding, but I found once the actual day came, I was like, well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's gonna go wrong? Is it's gonna, it's go, gonna wrong. go wrong. Yeah. yeah. I was like, okay, shit's gonna happen. I have two kids, two that are really young. I have a three and a four year old. And so I felt like a lot kind of depended on their mood. I was like, oh god, I hope they're having a good time. Yeah. Did you hire someone to take care of the kids during the wedding, like at the wedding, or did they come to the wedding? What happened? Yeah, so they came to the wedding. Um, they were in the ceremony, and Justin and I were like. Just let them do whatever they want. If they want to 
run into our arms and be held, then we're going to hold them. And if they want to just like run around in up and down the aisle, go for it. Like we were just like, you no, know, we want this to be our real life and we don't want to have to like stress about it. And we don't care if they're making noise. We just want them to be a part of it. Right. And they just actually wanted to like stand <laughs> next to us Aww. the whole time. They wanted to stand next to us. Sometimes they were like holding our hands. Sometimes Aww. they wanted to be picked up. That's so cute. Yeah. Sometimes they wanted to oh, be like. Oh, I can by... picture little Margo too. Oh, sorry, I shouldn't say your children's name. That's but okay. <laughs> yeah, I can picture. I like ones. filmed her before. Yeah, it's, it's impossible so not to. She's so freaking cute. Yeah, your daughter is the cutest kid on earth. She hates getting well, her hair done. Don't but... get me wrong. Both your children are the cutest kids on earth. But the no, young, the young, no, Margo's really cute. <laughs> the youngest is just like a little supermodel, and is also uh, just at that age when they're still toddlers, right? Yeah. Uh, so Margo, I'll paint you a picture, is hilarious. Um, she is really beautiful. She's three years old and she has like pale skin and like a cute little red mouth and like dark hair and dark eyes and she's like so beautiful like a little doll and then she smiles and like all of her teeth are pointy <laughs> she has like a really deep raspy voice she sounds like like a she is joplin like as a three-year-old i oh my god like oh, she's just god. such a character what products are you using okay so right now i'm using um i just used sebastian penetrate for shampoo this is a really good repair and hydrating shampoo. Smells fucking amazing. I love Sebastian shampoos. And then this one is actually a um, color conditioner by Wella. Because it's what I have in my basement right now. <laughs> For no other reason than that. Mm. Uh, but if I had to choose, I would probably use Sebastian's Drench for her curly hair uh, conditioner. Yeah, penetrate for the shampoo and then drench for the conditioner would be really good. Is oh, it badly tangled right now? Not at all. Okay, good. It was so bad in the shower the other day. Oh my god. It's like I've done that, that, that rarely. Shower. Yeah, that rarely happens to me. But I've been using so many new products lately. Like I've gotten like five PR packages in the last like two weeks. Awesome. Yeah, which is amazing, and I'm so grateful. Um, but they all had protein in them. Uh -oh. And my hair is super, like, I have to be careful, but it's, they also all have, like, silicone in them, which, I mean, the silicone's not bad, but, um, I find if I'm, like, using all products with silicone, all products with protein, like, usually I try to avoid silicone at least until I get to my styling products. Just so everything gets moisturized. Yeah, so why is that? What do you find? So, silicone, um, the silicone thing is all hearsay. I wouldn't say I found anything, other than the fact that obviously if I use a clarifying shampoo on my hair, my hair gets curlier afterwards because it removes buildup, but that's not necessarily silicone. It could be. Um, but I know silicone can, certain types of silicone can build up on my hair, or at least intellectually, I've been told that. Um, and so if you're using the gentle low poo shampoos that a lot of wavy folks like to use, they're not necessarily going to be sufficient to mm. remove some of that buildup. Um, but I'm kind of, I don't know, many things that I'm not ready to discuss yet. <laughs> My thought on that is evolving for wavy hair. Mm. I have some new mousse we're going we're gonna to try. Oh, I love mousse. Yeah, I love mousse too. I've like rediscovered mousse recently. Like Me too. Like blowout mousse and curling, curling, Me like, too. curling creams. I'm kind of like shying away from curly creams right now. Uh, yes, yeah, she will style my hair as well. Chris really wants you to cape me up. Why are we so pressed on her caping me up? <laughs> <laughs> like, what is happening with that? Can I have some <coughs> coffee? Pardon? Coffee? Yeah. Thank you for that. <coughs> I have asthma, so if I have to walk away and cough my brains out. It's not COVID? Fine. No. <sighs> no. I already had COVID like fucking eight times. 
don't want to get you sick with a cold. Yeah. You want just like a little splash of coffee? Or? Yeah. Okay. Do you want milk? All milk? No. Lots of your black. I like my small. Yeah. Sorry, can you, can you tell we're friends? <laughs> just like, hey, like, screw this live. We're just going to go get coffee and water. Um, this is for you. Thank you. I wish I had like a... I don't want to ruin your um, photo album. It's okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm just I really kidding. like the photo album. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like the chair I don't care about. Yeah. Oh my god, my hair feels good. Okay, so Mallory has been cutting my hair literally since probably I was 18. Like since you became a stylist. Holy shiza, really? Um, I mean, maybe a little bit later than that, but it was a long time ago. Yeah, no, I, I, I like started this right out of high school. So yeah. I was like, 18. So once you find a stylist that does your hair well, I would say even if 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 you don't love the cut someone gives you the first time, but they listen to you and they like take the time to actually like try and give you what you want, and then the next time you go in, they're like, "Okay, so what did you like last time? What didn't you like last time?" and give you a really good consult, and then this like I think because everyone's hair is so different, I like value a hairstylist who is gonna like take feedback. Cause I think a lot of hairstylists, if you say like, oh, you know, you did this last time, I'd like to do something differently this time, get offended. Mm. And like my mom struggles with that all the time. She's, she went to the same hairstylist for like 12 years and she never got a haircut she wanted. Cause she'd be like, okay, last time you teased my hair and you did this and I didn't like that. And then she would do it again the next time. And she's like, Margie, you just, you have to for your hair. And she's like, but I'm telling you, I don't want you to. Yeah. <laughs> so The fact of the, fact of the matter is, is that you actually don't have to do anything. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. There is no would, should, no, there's none of that. Like, yeah. And that's why I've always come back to you though, is because literally anytime I come to you and I'm like, okay, now I want to do this. And you're like, cool. <laughs> well, and you let's just, do it. Yeah, you just like work with me on everything. Also, if you're doing the same thing on the same on the on the same people, like yeah, you know over my and hair. over and over again, I'm kind of like the the, the times change and the trends change. The trends you wanna, change. Like, yeah. You want to you want to kind of keep up with it. Maybe not like TikTok style, where like the trends are changing like on a daily basis. Yeah, <laughs> not like that. But like, I think it's really nice when. <clears throat> People are doing your pe people come in and they're like, I'm ready for a change. I want to do something different. Like I feel fall in the air. I want to go warmer. I want to go darker. Whatever it is. And Chris is excited. He says, "Nice cape." <laughs> Same <laughs> guy. We came up. We came up. It happened. It happened. The stress. <laughs> oh. Will she? Won't she? Uh. The other thing is, I think, I'm sorry. like, every, like every time you go to a hairstylist, like I'm sure, like you're used to this, and I know hairstylists, I'm sure, look for like all the weird quirks of everyone's head, like where your crowns are, how thick the hair density is in certain parts, like how different the curl pattern is. But like once you have a hairstylist that has mastered that on your head, like and really knows your head, it's like you need to like you need to hold on to that. <laughs> That's so valuable. Yeah, I, I find you, um, because I struggle sometimes getting my hair cut, like it makes me anxious. Okay, well, go ahead. I'm just a, um, I don't know, like. You're anxious getting your hair cut? Mm -hmm. Do you cut, ever cut your own hair? Yeah, all the time. <laughs> because you're, so why are you anxious getting your hair cut? I don't know. I think Let's talk about like, haircut anxiety. Yeah, like I think it's just like a, maybe a security thing. Like a security blanket. And actually, this is as long as my hair has ever been. Normally, I have short hair. You had a pixie cut for a long time. Yeah, for a long time. I used to, like, I, I really like experimenting with my hair. But, yeah, I got, like, hair anxiety before I cut it. I definitely get hair anxiety. Even so. before you cut it? No, not no. really before okay. I cut it. But be, because before I cut it, that's when I'm, like, high on adrenaline. <laughs> you know, like when you decide to do something, it's like yeah. a split decision. You don't have time to think about it. You just do yeah. it. Yeah. That's typically when I'm cutting my Impulse hair. bangs. Yeah. Or that time I got an undercut. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> yeah. I dyed my blonde. hair blonde. Yeah. You did such a good job on that balayage. Yeah, that was fun. I got so many compliments and it grew out so well. That was like, really fun. Because like, obviously I'm not going to maintain a balayage because... That's just me. <laughs> but it stayed, like, it grew out so gradually that, like, 
it, I never felt like I had roots. You're gonna have to post some pictures of your old balayage. Oh my God, it is awesome. on my list of content. Like, well, you know, yeah. we, we were just talking about how we both have like a laundry list of like 50 pieces of content that we want to make. There just isn't enough time in the day. Yeah. Yeah, I want to make a piece that's like, first I had my hair like this, and then I did this, and then I did this, and yeah. then I did th yeah. And like, this is all the haircuts that I enjoyed along the way. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so for Gal's hair cut, um, she likes like a soft U shape in the back, but not a harsh V, like it's gonna be really, really soft. She likes it when it's a little bit shorter through the front and uh, it has that graduation. So she can get some shorter bits and face framing along the front of her hair. When it was shorter, I used to cut it a little bit more straighter all the way around. But now that it's quite long, I like to kind of exaggerate this U shape. So the way that I'm doing that is I'm pulling it down, I cut, and then I take a step to the side and I pull down my next section and I cut it straight there. And then I keep, I keep moving my body. As you move around her head and you just keep pulling your hair, keep, keeping your fingers completely parallel to your body, and then you come back to the middle, once you brush that down, it will be perfectly rounded. If I wanna cut it straight, I'm gonna keep my body stationary. And I'm just gonna pull everything down and then just keep pulling and kind of pulling pulling it back a little bit towards the center and cutting it straight so these corners through the outside of your section end up being ever so slightly longer but that's to compensate for the fact that you're cutting something straight on a surface that is not straight right she's got like a curved head she's got shoulders she's got and so you have to leave pieces of hair that are longer in order to make it appear straight. So that's how you cut it. Straight, your body's stationary. Rounded, your body is moving. Um, someone says, ooh, you have wavy hair. That's what I have and they never make it wavy. So you kind of have to tell, like you have to, your hairstylists don't know what you don't tell them, right? So not everybody with wavy hair wears it naturally wavy. Like if you always diffuse your hair or air dry it or whatever and want to bring out the natural wave and you never straighten your hair, you have to tell your hairstylist that. You can't just assume they know. Yeah. I mean, those are also questions that they should be asking. So for any hairstylist watching, that's like, you know, a key element. Although during my consultations, I always use photos. And so if they sit in your chair and show you photos of like a blowout or whatever and then they're like I never blow out my hair well you you have to address that <laughs> you gotta talk about that right yeah. expectations a lot of people just don't know too I've had so many people sit in my chair with like a wavy hair texture and then they show me like a blunt straight haircut and they're like I want my hair to sit like this and I'm like do you style it and they're like no mm -hmm. right so like there's there's connections there that are not being made where people think that getting my hair cut means it's going to look like this all the time. Right. I recognize most people are, are maybe like a, a little more self-aware than that, but I don't know. Especially just, not <laughs> younger like people too, like teenagers and stuff. Like I remember, well, when I was a kid, I wanted a pixie cut and I kept showing the hairstylist pictures of pixie cuts. But of course in the nineties, <laughs> every picture of a pixie cut was on straight hair. Every, right. so you could not find a picture of wavy pixie cut. Right. So uh, if you did have wavy hair and a pixie cut, you straighten your hair. And the, the hairstylist was trying to explain to me that's not what my hair was going to look like. But um, I almost wish at that time we didn't have internet on phones, but I wish that they, she had been able to be like, this is what a wavy yeah. pixie cut looks like. That's actually a really good point. When you're doing your consultation, it is not enough for you to say, this is not what the haircut will look like it that that's not where the end is you have to like continue with that this is what it can look like or this is what I think we should do because this is more cohesive with your lifestyle and the mm -hmm. way that you style your hair and the way that you do your hair yeah like you have to give them examples of what they can have you can't just tell them what they can't have mm -hmm. which I I find is like a huge missing component right. in sometimes when I am mentoring people are like I know I can't give them that haircut and I know why I can't give them that haircut. But then the next part of that consultation is to tell them what you can do. Yeah. Okay. 
So now I've cut her base all the way around. She's established her length. Now I'm going to start with her layers. So I'm taking a little section of hair off of the very apex of her head. The apex is the very top of her head. And I'm going to manipulate it with my fingers, kind of twirling it to see how much that weavy hair is going to bounce. Now I know Gal's hair pretty well. Um, I also know how well she is at manipulating it. <laughs> <laughs> so I already know that these top pieces, these top sections are the waviest part of her hair where she has um, the least more, spirally. Yeah. She's got like more coils underneath, but the top <sighs> is pretty wavy. So I'm going to see where that's going to bounce. And it, it's hitting like her shoulder right now. Her shortest layer is hitting her shoulder. This It's all the way down here. And that's when it's like um, scrunched up. I know I want it to hit around her occipital bone, which is that bone that sticks out in the back of her head. That's where I want her first layer to hit. I want pieces throughout the top to be even shorter than that. But I don't want to make her her structure of her layers shorter than that because then it will it will be too short. It won't make sense. So the shortest I can make it is around her occipital bone and measuring, I have this much to cut off. So I'm gonna pull that up and I'm just gonna cut it off. A lot of people say that you can't cut curly hair wet. Why not? You can cut any hair wet and any hair dry. So now I have her layers established, the length of her layers. I'm gonna pull this up and I am using this back end, which is just underneath her occipital bone as my guide and then the apex as my other guide and I'm gonna connect everything in between. Now if I pull that 90 degrees from the head right up, I still have a lot more left here to connect with here. So I'm going to pull over direct pulling everything forward until I can connect those two pieces together. Holy moly, your hair is long, it's crazy. I know, what a difference since the last time you cut it. Yeah, and now I'm taking pie-shaped sections, pivoting around my stationary guide down here. The guide at the bottom is moving with every section, but it's always coming to the same stationary point at the top of the head. I'm so excited to have a fresh cut. <laughs> I'm so excited for you. I was debating because uh, I knew I couldn't make my appointment in November and I just didn't know if we were going to be able to see each other. And so I was debating. I'm like, should I go see someone else or should I like do um, one of those like at home unicorn cuts or whatever just for the sake of the content? <laughs> yeah, <man. laughs> and just like not take too My hair was so long that I'm like, even if I totally butcher it, you'll fix it next time you see me because yeah. I had lots of length. Um, so you caught me probably seven days before I was going to give myself a unicorn cut. <laughs> I love it. The unicorn cut actually wouldn't... It works it, on a lot of yeah, people. Yeah, it wouldn't have been bad for you, though. It actually yeah. wouldn't have been bad for you. I think that, like, your ends may have been a little blunt. Okay, so now I've sectioned off from the ear, from the top of the head to the ear, right? So I have my front sections, and then I have my back section. So I started in the middle... I worked all the way to the side of my front section. Now I'm going to go back to the middle and work all the way to the side of this section. I wish this was on like a wheelie so I could turn you around. Yeah. <laughs> I've <laughs> set up this build for that. I know, Hillary. It's so long. Did you see when I straightened it the other day? It's like, <laughs> it looks like I've got a wig on. It looks so long. <laughs> T3 is sending me a new straightener. I'm excited. T3? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. You know who just sent me a straightener? Who? Dyson. Dyson. I saw your post. Dyson sent me a And you loved it, right? I loved it. Okay. And for a time and place. Hold on. Let's be honest. Let's be honest. I, I loved it honest. for me. I loved it for like... But not for the salon. Um, is no, that what I loved mean? it for the salon. And no, what I mean is your hair requires... Um, more heat in order to get it smooth. Oh, so it's more for like a loose wavy. 
Uh, it's more for hair that is naturally smooth. <laughs> Okay. So if you have curly enough hair or wavy or enough hair that it gets really frizzy and you need a lot of heat to really get it smooth, it's extremely dry or it's just like naturally very frizzy, this Dyson Corel Pro, which is their, their new flat iron, is not for you. Mm. As all Dyson is not for you. Oh, really? It just doesn't get hot enough? It just doesn't get hot enough. Oh, that's so interesting. I've yeah. never heard that hot take. Yeah. I know okay. I'm like nervous to post that as a post on my TikTok because I have like a really good relationship with Dyson, but I'm like, sorry, bro. Like it's good for a lot of people. It's but just I, not here's good Here's the for... thing. Do they really want people to buy their product if they're going to be unhappy? I think education. They, ad they uh, advertise it. Oh, that's fair. They yeah. advertise it that way. Yeah. And I'm like, mm. That's the disconnect between the product engineers and the uh, marketing team, eh? That's right. Yeah. Okay, now I'm working on the sides. I'm going to continue working in a pivot in pie-shaped sections surrounding the head. Now this this patterning where like you take everything from the apex and you literally just work in pivots around, you can only use this on extremely thick hair. It creates a lot of volume and a lot uh like more of like a cylindrical look from a bird's eye view but it takes away a lot from the density of the sides underneath here so if you don't have somebody who has very thick hair um it it can be like too top heavy i don't know if that makes sense it's kind of hard to describe i'm gonna make like like head sheets to explain what it is that I'm talking about. Like when you are- What's um, a head sheet? A head sheet is like when you go on training as a hairstylist okay. and it's a piece of paper with like a, a drawing of a head, but from all angles. Oh. And then you can literally like draw your sections so that people understand what it is that you're freaking talking about. Right. Yeah, I'm marinating in my head what you're saying about uh, Dyson. Because I think like I've taken, when I'm working with brands, I've kind of taken like probably a risky approach, but whatever, um, is in my mind, I'm always like, I'm s like, I don't want to sell products. I want to connect products to people that need them. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> like if you're a brand and you're working with me, that's what I'm doing. I'm not just selling your product. I'm connecting it to the people that need that product. Uh, and so like, I haven't really hesitated to call out who products aren't right for. Mm -hmm. Same with like Lus. I've said that before. Like uh, you guys know I'm a brand ambassador for Lus. I love Lus brands and I can tell you exactly who most Lus brand products are not right for. If your hair easily goes into moisture overload, um, and it very easily gets overly soft or even gummy while wet, Lus products are extremely moisturizing and might not be right for you. Mm. Um, not afraid to say it. I don't know, maybe one of these days Les will be like, stop saying that. <laughs> but like, I think it actually gives them like a lot more validity to the people who are right for it. Well, and I just did a post yesterday. I was telling you my hair was just starting to go into protein overload yesterday. And I showed like what I was dealing with. I didn't show the product that did it, but I was like, you know, for any hair brand, if you Google hair loss and that hair brand, you're going to get a hit, right? Like I heard... Barbara from Curl Vitality talk about that, especially in the curly hair space. Like if you type in Curl Smith, Lust Brands, like uh, Garnier Fructis, like it, literally any brand and type in hair loss, you're going to find someone saying that all their hair fell out when they use that product. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's a botched product. Mm -hmm. Like it could be that they were allergic. It could be that they had a lot of stress in their life at that time. Yeah. It could be that they had COVID. It could be that their hair went into serious protein overload or like it could be so many things that cause that hair loss, but I just feel like if you like really call out like the pros and cons of everything, it can help people figure out more closely whether or not that product is right for them and hopefully avoid that rather than just like blanket being like, I don't know. Yeah, I, I see that a lot. People being like, never use this brand because all my hair fell out when I used them. And I'm like, well, there's a lot of reasons that could have happened. Mm -hmm. Use this brand because all my hair fell out when I used them. And I'm like, well, there's a lot of reasons that could have happened. Mm -hmm. A lot of reasons that could have happened. Mm -hmm.
Uh, I also find that it is like extremely unlikely that your hair would fall out from a topical product. <laughs> Not that it's impossible. I mean, no, no. Diva Girl had, had that huge lawsuit. I don't know any of the details of the lawsuit, but, um, but yeah, uh, like from for, my especially knowledge. fallout from the root. Yeah, I think there's two types of hair loss that, and people use the word hair loss interchangeably and probably shouldn't. There's breakage, severe shedding, and breakage, which I mean, you can get hair loss from bleaching your hair too much. It's not real hair loss. It's shedding and breakage. Yeah, yeah. That's shedding and breakage. And I think That's typically when people say hair loss about topical products, I think they're talking about shedding and breakage. Okay. Because, yeah, like from my understanding of like, I don't know how the body is, like hair loss happens on the inside. Yeah. So like you know, it can happen with a big hormonal change or it can happen. So like when you go through puberty, when you, um, go through menopause, after you have a baby, your hormones are going out of whack. Your body is trying to tell you something is trying to tell you something is wrong. And, uh, oftentimes the way that your body sends you signs that something is going on inside of it that you need to pay attention to is through our hair, our skin, in our gut. Mm-hmm. Those are like the areas where your body will try and send you signs. Oh, and for women, like period health. Yeah. Like if you're in a lot of pain or if you're bleeding too much or if, whatever, right? Um, like a lot of times it's your body trying to send you a sign being like, pay attention to me. Something is happening inside you right now. And so oftentimes that happens with our hair, which is like just such a punch in the face. Like, we're really stressed. What happens? Our hair falls out. <laughs> like, as if that's not going to make us more stressed. You know? Oh, my oh gosh. My the way that your hair forms. Uh, that side is so annoying because it curls towards my face. The other side I can more easily get to curl away from... Wait, or do I have it backwards? No, this side curls towards your face. But yeah. then the curl right behind it doesn't. <laughs> it's because I have... I don't know if it's called... If that's what a crown is, but it's right here. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's this curl direction. curls in front of your face. This curl curls away from your face. Yeah. And then, oh, all the curls behind it curl away from your face. Mm-hmm. If we could just cut that. If you just want a razor, that section, <laughs> just cut it right off of the root. <laughs> <laughs> Shave it off. Yeah. Okay. That, and that's one of the big reasons I do still do just like five brush curls on each side right around my face tiny little brush curls just to over direct the hair to try and get the curls around my face to go away um it makes a big difference in the finished product i like the look of it especially now that i'm not doing a uh, bang a bang yeah okay here comes everybody's either favorite or most hated technique (laughs) i am gonna do the star technique where I just like pick up random chunks of hair from the top of her head and pull it up and cut it several inches shorter are people hating on it oh it's 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 a love hate relationship I think like if you don't understand it and you never tried it you like absolutely hate it or like if you don't struggle with the area like with the the problem of like not getting root volume root volume or you want like a shaggy look or right like if you're not going for that vibe then people are like oh cringe (laughs) But um, I think for everyone who is kind of going for that look and is struggling in that area, they love it. Yeah. So it's always the same. If you like the hairstyle, then you love it. If you don't like the hairstyle, then you hate it. Oh, but I have had a lot of people ask me, like, I don't understand how that grows in. Like, how do you recut that afterwards? Oh, that's a good question. And the answer is just like, it just like grows out. And then you cut your shape. And then like, when you cut your shape, you cut it closer to when you originally picked up those pieces. And so you can just like recreate it all over again. Like I've been doing this for years and I've never had a problem. So I don't, it's not something that you really have to worry about, you know? How did you wear your hair for your wedding? Oh, that was a game time decision. I wore it up. Did you do your own it. hair or did you get it done? Of course I did my own hair. Did you really? Yeah. I did everyone's hair. Oh my god, Mallory. <laughs> I did everyone's hair. 
Simon's hair. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I wore it up and I loved it. Did you? Mm-hmm. In like, what kind of, an, like, did you have like a part at all or was it all straight back or did you have a bang? Give me, I want details. It was all straight back. Um, yeah, it was all straight back. Oh, by the way, and I like, saw some pictures of your dress. Holy hot mama. <laughs> it was gorgeous. Where did you see those? Katie. Okay, yeah. I've been working out with Katie twice a week. I know. They told me. <laughs> and jealous? they were like, I feel like I'm cheating on you. I was like, what are you talking about? No. I'm so happy you guys are doing that. Yeah, that's so amazing. Funny. I feel like I'm cheating on you. <laughs> uh. Okay. Okay, friends. Awesome. So now I'm All done. Going... Just kidding. Yeah. All I'm done. done. Thank you for coming. <laughs> I'm going to grab my spray bottle. Yep. We're going to re-wet you. And then we will start diffusing. Woohoo! <sighs> Mallory is a queen. She's. If you want to book uh, an appointment with Mallory, her books are currently closed. However, she works at Hair Republic um, in Claren on Clarence Street in the Byward Market in Ottawa. She has been cutting my hair for like more than 10 years and love, 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 love. Um, and yeah, but her books are currently closed. But if you keep an eye out, check periodically, follow her on Instagram because when your books reopen, are you going to announce it on Instagram? We're going to find out when she gets back. Uh. Sweet coffee. This is a particularly nice treat for me because I actually don't drink coffee. But my mama is in the hospital today. So I'm going straight from here to the hospital. And so we're drinking coffee today. Your hair is going through a bad phase. Oh, I'm sorry. Melissa, you know you can always send me a DM, right? Have we DM'd before on Instagram? If you haven't followed me already, this is probably a good time to do that. Uh, don't forget to hit that follow button. I'm all about helping people embrace their naturally wavy hair. The tips that I give are effective for wavy hair, but they can. a lot of them are also effective for curly hair, so you are welcome either way. Um, I'm about to launch a series in the next two weeks about intro to wavy hair, everything you need to know to embrace your wavy hair in a five part series. It's going to be pinned to a playlist at the top of my profile um, so that you can easily find it. So if you are just getting started with your wavy hair, like, you know, adventure, welcome. So glad you're here. And Mal, are you going to announce it on Instagram when you reopen your books? Yeah. Yeah, I'll announce it everywhere. So you got to follow her on Instagram and TikTok because she's great. Also because your TikToks are, like, I'm addicted. To my TikToks? I'm addicted to a good transformation. Yeah. And it's all transformations. Yeah, it's, it's true. It's true. I do it all day long. It's so fun. I love my job. It's very lucky. But I have a lot of people who are, like, willing to pay me money to do it. It's so cool. Melissa, if you really messed your hair up, clarify it and, like, just stick to, if you have safe products, like a safe leave-in conditioner, just stick to that for a little while. Sometimes I give my hair a break for a week or two. <laughs> oh, it's the nicest thing ever. Thanks, Linnell. I can't read, I'm too far away. Oh, are, I, you know what's so funny? I didn't even look into the thing and I knew what you were spraying from the smell. I'm like, ooh, she, it's my yeah. Bonicure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is moisture kit. so good. It's a leave-in conditioner. I'm like essentially re-wetting Gal's hair with it. Although I'm gonna get you to come over and we're just gonna like spray some water into it. Yeah, yeah, it dries quick. It, my hair, I feel like, I don't know if my hair used to be lower porosity or if I had a, used to have a lot of buildup on my hair so it was acting lower porosity, but I feel like my hair dries a lot faster than it used to. Like when you, like th three first years started, ago? yeah, like three years ago. Mm. I don't know. Your hair is just like an entirely different head of hair. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. than when you first started three years ago. Aww. And so was mine actually. Like, yeah. It could be like an age thing. Yeah, as that's well. true. I used to have really flat, greasy hair. That was like my issue. Oh, really? And up until very recently, I've always been like, that's my issue. Except, you know, I, and it's so funny because I tell people this all the time. And people are like, oh, like 
in high school, my hair was so different. And I'm like, yeah, well, you're an adult. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Puberty. You're just, like, not in high school anymore. <laughs> Stop comparing yourself to high school. And I yeah. feel like that's what I've been doing. Being, like, my hair is straight yeah. and flat and greasy. And it's, like, actually, it's, like, not. I've it's had not a lot of people send me pictures of themselves as, like, toddlers. And be, like, see, I have curly hair. And it's not like that anymore. And I'm, like, Yeah. <laughs> You had toddler curls, and now you've got wavy hair or straight hair. Yeah, yeah. You can have curls as a child and literally end up with straight hair. It's like, is your body look the same? <laughs> Does your brain seem the same? I mean, like, like you had your hair. You were six months old. You had blue eyes in that picture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Exactly. Okay, should I just stick my head in the sink? Yeah. I okay. Have. Okay, we're leaving you for five seconds. So yeah, I yeah, yeah. Is. I see what you're saying. So they can see what we're doing. Yeah. What you're doing. Yeah. Because I'm doing so much here. Oh okay. Let's see if you can slide down and put your head against. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Look at that. Made it happen. Do you want to even rotate like more? No, I think we have good. that. Okay. This is the right chair for this. It's like padded and everything. Yeah, is it comfy? Yeah. I also have like chronic neck pain and it's giving me like pressure, which feels so good. Oh, okay, good. Um, I was at the gym two days ago and I do like foam rolling on my legs and like, I'm pretty sure you shouldn't foam roll your neck. I'm pretty sure it's really dangerous, <laughs> but I had such bad like neck pain and shoulder pain that I was like, I'm doing this and it felt so good. And yesterday I like couldn't move. I was in so much pain. Oh no. It was so bad. I was like, hey, don't ever do that again. Oh, that's But it sucks. felt so good. It felt like I was getting massage. Turns out I was just injuring myself. Okay. So, <laughs> I'm going to teach you guys the way that I like to style hair. It may not be popular to the masses, but it's coming. I'm telling you right now, it's coming. It is, I like to call it just like rock star hair. It's just like, it's not perfect. It's not quaffed. It's not like perfect little curls. It's just whatever your hair wants to do um, with a little bit more encouragement and definition than before. God, it's crazy. The underneath of your hair is like... I know, it's very spirally. Not at all the same as the top. I know. <laughs> uneven curl pattern. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? Honestly, but like, does anyone have even curl pattern? No, 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 no. Although it is pretty dramatic on my head. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's funny, that's probably one of the biggest questions I get is like, oh, it's straight in this part of my head and curly in this part of my head. And honestly, I feel like the two best pieces of advice I have for that, one is to go to a hairstylist who's going to take that into consideration when they cut your hair. Yeah. So that you don't end up with like weird long bits. And then also in 
embrace it and stop fighting it. <laughs> yeah, stop trying to make stop it perfect. It. Yeah, it's fine. Like, n- first of all, other people don't notice as much as you do. Second of all, there's nothing wrong with that. Like, if you have wavy or curly hair, you don't have uniform wavy or curly hair. Like, it's just very unlikely that it's all uniform. That's part of the look of wavy and curly hair. That's right. So I'm just taking a few pieces, especially around the front, and I'm really, like, twisting them around my finger and kind of perfecting them a little bit. But I'm just using my finger. You can use a Denman. You can brush curl. You can, whatever, experiment. Like, do whatever feels right to you to make sure that you get it. And then something that Gal taught me, which is really important, is um, if you dry your hair, there is no separating those curls afterwards. So make sure that you separate the curls and that they don't dry in like a big clump if you want them to be like a little bit more spaced out and a little bit more airy and kind of, um, what's like voluminous voluminous yeah Yeah, exactly you don't want it to the curl clumps that your hair dries in they're gonna keep reforming into so even if you separate them once the hair is dry it's gonna keep reforming and you're gonna spend all day shaking your head upside down and you're gonna break your neck (laughs) i thought is that how you did yours yeah why do you think i have chronic neck pain no i'm kidding Uh, but yeah no i that's i didn't realize that for like a year and a half and then i forget who i finally saw say that and I was like duh (laughs) like yeah how have I not noticed this because like I was living it and it just makes your refreshes so much easier if you refresh your hair because overnight all those curl clumps are going to reform in fact even if you do break up your curl clumps while you're wet probably they're going to clump together a little bit overnight not necessarily but probably so you're still going to be doing a little bit of breaking them up the next morning but not nearly as much if you make sure you get the curl size and shape that you want while it's wet and then you know drying is basically like fixing it like that right, right. it's like the the pause button not entirely but you get what i'm saying what do you do for these curls underneath uh are you talking products are you talking about styling technique styling technique So if I was doing it without a brush on soaking wet hair, like I apply my product and then like I do, I apply my product first and then I do my shaping. Right. Um, But I would probably on soaking wet hair do like praying hands rake and then kind of give them a shake to revive them. And the praying hands will like help clump them so that they're not stringy and get rid of wet frizz. And then the raking will separate them into the curl clumps and the shake will revive the curl powder. Mm-hmm. Um, but I also will do like the ribbon curl method where you just like brush through in sections and then the bristles will kind of separate them into curls mm-hmm. and then just shake them and scrunch them. Yeah. Um, but I, I'm going to do something like that usually. I definitely feel like the wetness of your hair has a lot to do. Yeah, if you apply products to hair, uh, especially if you're like a beginner with all of this and you're applying products to hair that isn't super wet, probably you're going to end up with like very stringy curls, Um, like a lot of very tiny waves, very tiny curl patterns, or like a little bit of frizz versus water allows you to add almost like less product because your product isn't doing the job of clumping. The water is doing the job of clumping your hair and like smoothing it. Yeah. So what mousse are you using right now? So I'm trying a new mousse that I just got. It's called the Style Curl Power Curl Bounce Mousse by Sexy Hair. I hate the name of this company. (laughs) Come on. You couldn't think of anything else. It's but called sexy hair. It's called sexy hair. Ugh, gross. I hate it. Just Can like you periodically it. check the comments because I can't see them. Yeah, for here. sure. I absolutely hate it. That being said, they make really good products. <laughs> they do. They make really good products. My hair was so curly as a baby, and Probably. they went away. But now it's curly. Oh, I definitely yeah, think it's an age thing. Yeah, hundred percent. Hundred percent. I'm going to brush out some of these curls under here. I'm trying to style them. 
because they're looking stringy. Yeah, that's what I do. But I think this is also like a helpful thing is a lot of people think brush styling is super overwhelming because they're like, well, that must take forever to brush style your whole head. You don't have to brush style your whole head. You can style it like what she's doing here. You can just scrunch. And then once you're done that, look at the problem areas. Yeah. Like what sections are not looking clumpy in the way like luscious, what areas are looking like you just stuck your thumb in an electrical socket. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, big time. Yeah. Yeah, this brush is really helping. This is my Olivia Garden detangling brush. I'm obsessed with her brush, shiz, all of them. Can you see the product? Sorry. For sure. I think I saw you posting about the, those brushes. Yeah, I love them. I wish it was sponsored, but it's not. <laughs> I just love her. Olivia, <laughs> looking at you, babe. Um, I'm pretty sure I tagged the brand in your post about that. <laughs> yeah, you did. You did. I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah. So Matt is, uh, my husband, for anyone who doesn't know, is growing his hair long. Cool. And it is, Mallory, it is gorgeous. Oh, yeah? Like, his hair is so thick, like, so luscious, jet black. Uh, well, it's probably brown, but you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it looks black, and it's already, it's growing so fast. It's already almost, like, it's probably, like, that long. Ooh, pretty long. And he gels it all back like a hockey player, and it looks so good on him. But it's, like, killing me because he's got the most beautiful little wave in and it. And you're like, I want to smell that. <laughs> I'm like, let me you your hair. You're like, Please. Yeah, he's right. like, not in a million years. But I'm like, oh my god, I'm salivating over his hair. But he's gonna, <laughs> he's gonna grow it so that it's like all one length, like n sort of like. Like four. He can, yeah. Yes. He just wants to be able to gel it back. But he's um he has uh like sensory challenges. Yeah. And so getting his haircut has been really challenging for him over the years, and he hates it. Um. And finally, he was like, I just don't want to get a cut every six weeks. And you're like, so don't. And he's like, I'm gonna grow it out, and I'm like. Yeah, I love the man bun. Like, I'm so here for this. Yeah, I you love it. Yeah. I know Justin's here is really long right now, too. Yeah? We're at a crossroads where it's like... Can you guys hear us? Usually, yes. Yeah? Just talk a little louder. We're at a crossroads where, where he's like, yeah, he's got to do something. He's got to do something about it, too. We have to cut it and shape it a little bit more. Yeah. yeah. Are you okay? Yeah. Okay, let me know if you have to do that. Um, yeah, Matt has just, because, like, you know that first grow-out period, you kind of just have to let it grow out for a little bit. Yeah. But he's just at the point now where I'm like, you really should go, like, you're starting to get a rat tail. You should go in <laughs> soon and get someone to touch it up. Stop. <laughs> I felt like I added a lot of product to your hair, and it still wasn't enough. Really? <laughs> yeah. We'll see. You can, I find with my hair, I can sometimes add, especially the juice that I'm working with, I can add more when it's at like a 50% dry phase, yeah. if I have to. Especially mousse, because it's already so like, like it's, it's easy to distribute yeah, it yeah. evenly. So, yeah. um, lately I've been erring on the side of like, just add what you think you need, don't worry about adding too much, and if I need to go back in and add more at the 50%, then I'll do that. I often, if I'm using mousse, um, because sometimes mousse, I just don't get longevity out of it. Um, now, most mousses I'm using are drugstore mousses. I haven't played around with a lot of different brands. Um, but I still sometimes I will use mousse, I diffuse, and then when I'm like 50% dry, I water down one of my favorite Stronghold gels. 
and I scrunch that and glaze that over my hair, like on the partially dry hair. And then I finish dry? Yeah, partially dry hair, which is so weird. But then I finish diffusing and it gives me like a really like nice crunchy cast and like no frizz, but also lots of volume. Because you know sometimes gel can give like a little bit of weight to your hair yeah. if you're like really working it through the hair. Yeah. Well when I do this, the gel is really just sitting on top of the hair, right? right? right. So it doesn't like weigh down the hair, but it helps get a little bit more longevity. So anyways, it's something I've been playing around with lately. I don't know if it would work on anyone else's hair because it's like such a weird thing to do. It's a weird order. Yeah, um, but it works well for me. But I mean, that's the thing is like, there's really no rules, right? Well, Whatever. Like, the next vlog we do, you should style my hair. <gasps> That'd be so fun! Yeah, because I'm really struggling with um, styling my baby hair when it's long like this. And it's kind of like dead because I like highlight it and I heat style it like all the time. I'm not shy with my hair, I don't care. Oh my um, god, that would be so fun. Yeah, so you can like do some stuff and yeah. experiment a little bit. Love it. It's so nice having someone else to use your hair. <laughs> yeah, I guess you're always going to do your own. I know. I've been like honestly debating buying a dryer, like like a hood dryer. A hood dryer. They probably cost a small fortune, though. I bet you could find one used. Probably, because the hood dryers aren't really used very much. Let me know if you want to. I'm okay. Like, or like, you can like, can like flip the other way. Uh, yeah, let's flip the other way for now. That's okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, she's gone. That's all right. That was just for your comfort anyway. Here we go. I thought you said this was loud. Is it loud? No. No, it's not. My Dyson is Okay. I think I have a I have the less blow dryer and it's pretty loud. You find it loud? Yeah, it's loud. But it's quieter than my Con Air was. <laughs> oh my god, your yeah. Con Air! Yeah. I can't believe you started your like journey with the Con Air blow dryer. <laughs> That's so funny. Hey man, you made it pretty far too. Why don't you put your elbows here? What's that? Why don't you put your elbows here so that you're not like holding yourself up? I'm pretty happy. Yeah? Um, but I had like an upgraded diffuser attachment, but I don't know, I think like, like, what do you think about diffusers? Like, yes, have, I think having a more expensive diffuser likely will cut your drying time, but since getting started, getting established with like products is so expensive when you first get started with like, your curly hair. I honestly think your diffuser is something you can, and blow dryer is something you can cheap out on at the beginning. Like, I, for, at the very beginning, I was using a $2, like, blow dryer that I had bought at a charity shop that came with a diffuser. <laughs> and, like, was it damaging my hair? I mean, I don't know, maybe. I was using heat protectant. Um, but I used that for a long time and got great results. I'm like, yeah, it took longer, but like, if you only have 50 bucks to get set up, which a lot of people do. A lot of people are like, I have twenty five dollars or I have fifty dollars, and I want to start trying to take like wear my hair wavy. Yeah, you know, you have to start somewhere. Yep. Yeah. gentle you are when you go through this. I think that's one of the biggest mistakes that people make when they first start diffusing is they're so aggressive. <laughs> like they're like the whole time it's just like bum, 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 not Ooh. like cupping the hair not like just and it just I mean don't get me wrong that can work for some people like that'll work 
on some hair types. If yeah. you're trying to create volume, if you're trying to create tossle, but if you're looking for more definition, you're trying to prevent frizz, I mean, you know, it's gonna do those things. Yeah. Like, I found for my hair, I, I used to be really, really rough for my hair, but my hair is like, it's wavier now. But for sure, when I first started experimenting with wavy hair, oops. Um, when I first started experimenting with wavy hair and my wavy hair, I just didn't know like anything about really how to style it or anything. I don't know. I just didn't know anything about anything. Yeah. And so I found myself like flipping my head upside down, just like getting in there. Yeah. But I also think because of your, your like looser wave pattern, like you were trying to probably create volume. Yeah. Trying, that's what I mean. Like on mine, when I do that, I, I literally look like I'm going to prom and it's 1983. Kind of about that. <laughs> My blow dryer keeps like switching seats. That's so funny. Does it just want to be on the high setting? Yeah. I, I think that's why it's quieter than mine. I always put on a high airflow. So why do you choose the medium airflow? Maybe I need to learn something here. Um, no, it should probably be on higher airflow. Oh no. I'm just trying to be gentle with your hair. I have it on like a medium deep setting. It's pretty hot though. This is my like home blow dryer. Normally I have my dents in. I was just watching, um, I follow a curly hair specialist from Manchester. Her name is Curly Gal Flow, I think. Um, and she does all like kinky, curly, and wavy hair in Manchester. Um, and she was answering the question like, oh, my hairstylist tells me I shouldn't use heat on my hair if I want to wear it curly, blah, blah, blah. And I thought Chloe's answer was really interesting because I've heard that too. Like anecdotally, you shouldn't use any heat at all on curly hair. But like, it's just like, in what, on what planet do you live? It's like... <laughs> I mean, how do you get it dry? How do you get it dry? Yeah, like, unless you're going to air dry your hair. So, for my hair, I use medium heat most of the time and sometimes high heat to, like, cut down on dry time at the end. Um, but I try to use products that have built-in heat protection. Uh, but anyways, this, this uh, hairstylist said, guys, really what they're talking about is heat styling your hair with like a curling iron, a straightener, like that sort of thing, like the damage that you're going to get from that compared to just using your hair, even on a high heat setting, it's just like not the same. It's not even comparable. Yeah. So people are like, un, like maybe trans, like, like um, transcribing the meaning of don't use heat on your hair from using heat styling tools to using a diffuser and maybe shouldn't be. Yeah. That's not to say don't be like respectful of your hair and cautious. Like don't diffuse on high heat until you smell burning. <laughs> yeah, if you smell burning, that's coming from the front of your blow dryer, not the back. Sometimes hair gets caught in this. You also always find that the halfway mark it like is kind of frizzy. Yeah. And then like the closer you get to done, the like less frizzy it gets. Yeah. Yeah. That's I don't get that when I'm brush styling, but if I'm doing any technique other than brush styling, a hundred percent and it's kind of like a trust the process moment. Yeah, yeah. Keep diffusing. And what the problem is is a lot of people see that and they're like, I need to stop I need to diffusing. Stop. I need to let it finish air drying and that's honestly like the worst thing you can do in that scenario like sometimes i will switch to hover diffusing if i'm getting really concerned and like hover diffuse for the next 10 minutes because that's the least disruptive but generally like i just keep going and like once the hair is dry it's not gonna i don't know it's, for, it's more forgiving once it's dry when it's at that like 50 to 75 percent dry it, it looks mysterious <laughs> 
dry. Your hair is like just starting to make sense now. Okay. Because once you like scrunch out any pass or like just generally scrunch it once it's dry, you're gonna smooth it a little bit and like break out the curl pattern and that's gonna mask a lot of what's going on. It's looking so pretty. Do you want my hair more upside down or is it okay right now? No, it's good. Are you comfortable? Are you okay? Yeah, I'm good. I feel like I'm playing. This <laughs> the last time you did that. I mean, I play all the time, but maybe not to God. <laughs> I find almost always after I style my hair, there's at least, I mean, as you saw, one section of my bang that I'm like, and eh, now let's redo all of that, but just on this one curl. <laughs> yeah, I'm literally just re-wetting it and kind of brushing it with my hand. Although this curl pattern wants to move in many different directions. Mm -hmm. So I'm just gonna separate it. There we go, that's better. Just letting it incorporate itself back in. I'm literally just twisting it, guys. It's so weird having someone else do this to you because if you, it's like all of this is like complete chaos. It's so weird having someone else do this to you because if you, it's like. All of this is like complete chaos. It's so weird having someone else do this to you because if you, it's like, all of this is like complete chaos. All this is like complete chaos. Going out of my house right now, so I'm like jumping every time the phone rings. <laughs> If I brush style, is it cheating if I finger right, so style? Is it cheating if I'm using, wait, this way? No. Like oh, that? yeah, there you go. Okay. Are we done? Do I look at the camera? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, is it cheating if I do X, Y, Z? Guys, it's your hair. Yeah, there's no cheating. There's no right and wrong. If you yeah. like the way it looks. Yeah. That's it. That, yeah. That's the end of that, you know? Oh my gosh. Shake it out a little bit. Okay, one sec. Can I go upside down? Yeah. Oh, I'm still wet. Let's do one more. Yeah, sorry, it's it that last like if I shake it out right now, it's gonna get frizzy, frizzy. in about 20 minutes. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, all the way back here. Oh, unless you wanna nope. time wise. Uh no, I'm okay. Okay. Just put it on high heat. It is on high heat. What? It okay. Is on high heat. It's from here. To like a hundred percent dry is like the most annoying on my hair. It takes like I guys, I will download this and upload it to my YouTube channel. Um, so if you're just joining now or if you want to be able to go back and like review sections of this. Follow me on YouTube. <laughs> There's a playlist there called Live TikTok Replays. Are we going to dye your hair ever? Maybe. What do you have in mind? Not black. <laughs> <laughs> so she, I messaged Mallory because for Halloween I'm going as Morticia Adams. And so I wanted to dye my hair black with like a temporary single-use dye 
And of course, being the smart, good hairstylist client that I am, I messaged my hairstylist, Mallory, and was like, is this a bad idea? And Mallory's like, yes. <laughs> no, I literally said, gal, you're trying to make a living with your hair? Please, please do not fuck this up. Don't do it. Don't do it. There's no coming back from that. Like, and it won't look good on you. <laughs> it will not look good on you. <laughs> What's funny is I had black hair for a while and it looked terrible on me. Box, box dye black hair. I think I came to you afterwards to fix it. Or maybe that wasn't you who you fixed it. No, I, I just feel like, okay, this is going to sound mean. I'm going to say it out loud. Say it. 18 to 25, you can dye your hair whatever color you want. After yeah. that, it will just make you look five to ten years older if, if it doesn't suit you, if it's not flattering. Or if if it's too dark, specifically if it's too dark. Okay. If it's too light, it might just look bad. But if it's too dark, it'll make you look solid. Oh. You know what I mean? It'll make you look like uh, like life has been sucked out of your skin. What what blow dryer are you using? Oh, fuck, who cares? Um, <laughs> who cares? Someone's asking. <laughs> it's awful. Don't, but no, no, I don't want okay. No, this is just like a blow dryer that I've had under my sink for that. like 15 years. Like, too long. Um, it's not good. You're not I recommending would, it, basically. I would not recommend this. Zero out of ten. I do not recommend. I just forgot the diffuser to my Dyson. <laughs> so I'm using this. Okay, I'm not overly scrunching because, like, we've got a little bit of dampness in her still. Ooh, but, oh my god, it looks so good, Mal. Yeah, the shape has a really... Okay, one second. Whoop! Whoa. Everybody? You, want, you can go to the bathroom, too. The bathroom. I love it. Amazing. I love it. It looks so good. Yeah. What do you guys think? Oh. oh, I'm so excited to actually have shape to my hair again. Yeah, I love it too. It looks good on you. Yeah, you're getting a lot more. So I cut just like some random tendrils that are going to bounce up, but that everything can kind of come like to the side and you don't have like a full shaped bang anymore. Like it's too long for that. Sorry, I had to mute that person. That was getting annoying. And then... Okay. Yeah. You have oh, it one. looks so good, but I still have the length. <laughs> oh my God. It's been a long time since I've had like a cut with long and no bangs. Like yeah, it's, it's been, been a minute. It's been a minute. Okay. So if you guys want to see me style Mallory's wavy hair at some point, mm -hmm. drop a little comment on one of my videos and just be like, we want to see Mallory's hair styled by you. <laughs> and uh, if there's enough, if there's enough traction, we'll see. Um, what dryer do you recommend? Uh, so it's called Alchim, A-L-C-H-I-M. It's called the Alchim. Uh, it, it, like the original is red and it's the best blow dryer I've ever used. And it's fairly affordable. I think it's like 150 to $180, which might seem a lot for some people, but if this is like some cheaper than a Dyson, yeah, yeah, it's way cheaper than a Dyson. And, um, it's incredible. And that is the, the dryer that I have at my station when I can't use the Dyson because as we've already established the Dyson just isn't hot enough for some people so when I have to use a different blow dryer it's always my trusty Alchem I absolutely love it if you want to I can make a video um, yeah we want with all my tools like I'll just oh, recommend yes. all of my tools all the tools that I own and I'll tell you whether they were worth it or not Okay, add it to the list of content you need to make. Um, my hair is snappy and crunchy. I'm going to answer this first and then you answer it. And I'm curious to see. So if someone says my hair is snappy and crunchy, is this moisture overload or moisture kneading, I think is what they're saying. So my initial thing is obviously we can't answer that question without actually seeing, feeling, and touching your hair. My second question is, is it possible you have severe heat damage or bleach damage or color damage, something like that? Because obviously that could contribute to all those things. Uh, my second thing is both moisture overload and protein overload can both cause your hair breakage, shedding, things like that. Uh, I have a free guide you can download about protein moisture balance, which you can go check out. So that would be my answer to all of that. Yeah, I would say, um, I would say if it's not like obvious extreme heat damage or bleach damage, um, and the hair feels brittle, I think that's like the word that you're you're kind of searching snappy, for like crunchy. snappy crunchy it's like really brittle protein is probably my yeah. first yeah i agree yeah make sure the products that you're using don't have protein in them because when you have protein overload it can oftentimes have reverse effects and make it really brittle feeling mm -hmm. yeah exactly 
and shedding. Okay, guys, thank you so much for joining. Uh, I'm also going live tomorrow just because I have a weekly live on Tuesdays and we are going to refresh my new hair and I'm so excited. Uh, so I'll see y'all then. Otherwise, I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.